This document is about the internal resistance of a voltage source. Any device that produces a voltage output has a limit to the amount of current it can provide. This includes batteries, power supplies, function generators, amplifiers, logic gates, and so on. So the way this can be represented as a res is as a resistance in series with the ideal voltage output of the device. So here we have the model. So here we have an ideal voltage, V0. Here we have an internal resistance, Ri. And here we have the terminal voltage, which is the voltage that can actually be measured between the terminals of the device. The potential difference between the terminals of battery, Vt, decreases as the current supplied by the battery increases. This is due to the potential drop which appears across the battery's internal resistance, Ri. So the maximum output voltage you can measure is only when there's no current being drawn. So you can see this effect by watching how the measured voltage changes if we put a resistance across the terminals of the device. So here we have our battery, or whatever the device is, connected in series with this external resistance R. Notice that we've, what we've done is to create a voltage divider with Ri and R. So here we have the two parts of the voltage divider. Here's the input voltage, these are the two parts, and so Vt, the voltage across here, is the voltage across this part of the divider. So here's the equation for the voltage of, at the terminals. So we can rearrange it to get this expression so that if we measure Vt for a particular value of R and we know what V0 is, we can get Ri. Now how we get V0 is by measuring the voltage with no load. So if we don't put no resistor across the output so that the resistance is essentially infinite and measure the voltage, then that will give us a value for V0. And then if we measure it with some other resistance R, then we can determine Ri. And notice from this equation that the bigger Ri is, the bigger the difference between V0 and Vt for a given value of R, which should make sense, that the bigger the internal resistance is, the more of a voltage drop we're going to see for a given resistance. So here's a question. If R is chosen to equal the internal resistance, what will be the value of Vt? This is important, so think about that. So. If we graph this, we can show the results. So first of all, we want to linearize the equation. So if we take this equation and divide both sides by V0, then we get this. And we can rearrange that slightly, so we get this. So if we plot 1 over Vt versus 1 over R, then we'll get a straight line with a slope of Ri over V0 and a y-intercept of 1 over V0. So we can get Ri by dividing the slope by the y-intercept. So here's what it looks like. So here we have a 9-volt battery connected to a resistance substitution box, and we measure the voltage across the terminals of the battery. So here are the data collected for a new 9-volt battery. So with nothing connected across the terminals of the batter battery, we get a terminal voltage of about 9.27 volts. If we put a mega ohm across, then we still get 9.27 volts. 680K is the same, and so on. By the time we get down to an external resistance of 6800 ohms, the voltage has dropped a little bit to 9.24 volts, and so on. As we keep lowering the resistance, we notice that the terminal voltage goes down. Finally, when we get down to 47 ohms across the battery, we're down to a terminal voltage of 8.4 volts. So if we graph 1 over Vt versus 1 over R, it looks like this. So you notice, for a lot of the values, it isn't changing much. So what we get is a straight line with a little bit of a positive slope. So at least fair squares, squares fit to the data gives V0 of 9.2 volts. The maximum current is about 1.9 amps. 
and the internal resistance is about 4.8 ohms. So here are the data collected for a used 9 volt battery. So with no resistance across the output, you'll notice the value of the voltage is a little bit lower, 7.32 volts. With 1 meg ohm, it's the same. With 680K, it's the same, and so on. So if we keep going, what you will notice if you look back at the other data is that you'll notice as the resistances get lower, the drop in the terminal voltage is getting a little bigger than it was with the new battery. To the point where we get down to 47 ohms, now the terminal voltage is th just over 3.5 volts, which is less than half of what it started at. So the graph of 1 over VT versus 1 over R looks like this. So you'll notice it's a steeper slope. And that steeper slope compared to the last one indicates that the internal resistance is much higher. In other words, there's a bigger change in output voltage as the current changes. So another least squares fit was produced, but only the last five points were used because if you noted on that last graph, there was a little bit of curve right at the left of the graph. So this gives an output voltage of about 6.8 volts, a maximum current of about 0.33 amps, and an inter internal resistance of 20 ohms. So using all of the data points gives slightly different results, but they're still much different from those for the new battery. So here's a summary of the two batteries. So, so now, notice, even though the nominal battery voltage here of 6.8 volts is only 27% lower than the new battery of 9.2 volts, but the internal resistance is five times what it was, and the maximum current available is one-sixth of what it was for the new battery. So that means that when you are going to see the biggest difference between the old battery and the new battery is when you draw more current from it. In other words, measuring the difference with no current drawn will not show much of a difference, but the more current the draw you draw, the more difference you'll see between the new battery and the old one.